Hey friends, it's Gerald. So recently, I stumbled upon this platform that makes it super easy for beginners to get started with NFT. You don't have to have a lot of background with cryptocurrency. You don't have to have any experience with NFTs. And this platform makes it so easy for you to buy your very first NFT. However, it is important to note that, you know, I wish someone kind of gave me a couple of tips before I got started on this platform because one of the tips I've learned is that there are ways you can buy the NFTs at less than half the price that was listed on the platform. And that would have saved me thousands of dollars. So in this video, I wanna share with you some pro cool tips on how you can get started to buy your very first NFTs, as well as some of the ways you can save money. We're gonna explore what this BB platform is all about and why I think it's an awesome platform if you are looking to buy your very first NFT. So NFTs have the potential to really change uh, the digital economy and many big brands kind of realize that your big brands such as Marvel, your um, DC, your Coca-Cola, even your Pokemon, um, Nike, they all know that NFTs have a lot of potential. So just a week ago, you know, Pixar, the brand that we're all familiar with, Fighting Nemo, Toy Story. So they entered the scene, um, dropping their very first um, NFT collection. So I actually bought Woody during this drop. So it was launched at about $60 for a piece of the Woody NFT which quickly became like 200 plus dollars within the next 30 minutes. So apart from the crazy um, rise in price, the company also raked in about $3.3 million in 24 hours, which is insane. While it seems like it's a crazy opportunity to make massive profits, it's important to know that there's, there's really no such thing as uh, you know guaranteed profits. There's a lot of risk involved. I think the most obvious one with the BB platform is that it's very difficult to cash out because there's no official means of, you know, um, cashing out your crypto um, NFT gains. There are also other risks such as um, the difficulty of buying you know, those NFTs at the drop price. So you end up having to buy from the second hand market, which is like at a very hyped up price, which means you are susceptible to huge losses should the NFT become unpopular very quickly. And not to mention the other risks such as um, the platform risk, the you know utility of these NFTs. Of course, I'm not going to talk about them right now, but if you would like me to talk about all these various dangers with NFTs I've personally experienced, feel free to drop me in that comment section below and if there's enough interest um you know wanting to learn about this risk maybe i'll do a nft 101 guide based on what i've learned so let's start by talking about vv as a platform so vv is a digital collectible trading platform it is available through android um, and ios for beginners who would like to you know get started with it but they are soon going to have a more advanced difficult version that is available on the Ethereum blockchain through Immutable X. That's only if you're more advanced. So VV uses um, gem as a currency. So one gem on the platform is supposedly equivalent to a dollar. Of course, there are ways to buy it cheaper, which I'm going to talk about at the end of this video. But more importantly, what makes VV really stand out as a platform is that they have managed to sign exclusive partnerships with very big brands. Think of your Marvels your DC, your Cartoon Network, your Back to the Future, your Adventure Times, and so much more. Of course, I heard, you know, Pokemon might be coming soon, but who knows what will happen, right? So I first started using the VV platform in August last year, so August 2021. And I actually only signed up because I read the headlines that Marvel just signed a partnership and they're going to drop their very first NFT on the platform. And the very first NFT was a Spider-Man collection. So I think there were six different rarities of Spider-Man. And I love the Spider-Man character. Like, you know, it gives me the feels like how um, Spider-Man goes through a lot of the tragedies of being a superhero. So not everything is all nice and glorious. Uh, you know, how he struggles to really hard to make ends meet, delivering pizza, and how hard he was trying to um, study well while being a superhero. And all his loved ones are actually quote unquote being sacrificed, right? So let's talk about the stats of the drop. So back then there were 9,000 copies of the rare edition that I was looking at. It was selling for about 110 gems each. And for the secret rare, um, it was selling about 400 gems each, if I'm not wrong. But, you know, given how much I enjoy the Spider-Man character, I went ahead and bought it not because of an investment on purpose, but rather I just wanted to collect, you know, this Spider-Man NFT as part of history. So lo and behold, to my surprise, earlier this year, Spider-Man actually shot up and became a very valuable collection. I think it's one of the more popular uh, collections citation needed. And as of today, uh, the rare edition um, is selling about 800 gems and the secret rare sells about 40,000 gems. So I think at one point it climbed as much as I think 68,000 gems. Um, but thankfully, I managed to sell mine 
about at about thousand gems before fees, which I then used to buy Woody and keep about six hundred gems in profits. Of course, there were other NFTs which I bought, such as the Loki comic, which didn't do very well. But I think the losses, in my opinion, were minimal as compared to the gains I've had from this Spider-Man NFT. So if you'd like to hear more of my story and you enjoyed this sharing, do me a big favor and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's talk about um, why I think BB is a fantastic platform for beginners to get started, you know, buying your very first NFT. And I'll, I'm going to try to be objective and non-biased here. So the first one is that it's simply harder to lose all your money. Why? Because when it comes to NFTs, right, there's a lot of um, platforms around. And I think buying branded NFTs like your Marvel characters, your DC characters would retain its price a lot better compared to unbranded NFTs for the number one reason that um, the brand will be very careful not to damage their own reputation at first. And secondly, um, there's going to be a lot more character development. For example, if you buy your Batman NFTs, you know, half a year ago, you would have um, benefited with a lot more fans considering to buy Batman NFTs ever since um, the latest Batman movie was launched. Second reason is that VV doesn't have like a huge gas fee. There's transaction fees, which makes it a lot harder for you to kind of quote unquote lose money. Because back then when I was buying NFTs on um, MetaMask on OpenSea, transaction fees was as much as like $90. So the NFT was $30, but the transaction fee was $90. So then I ended up paying effectively $120. But not to mention, if I want to sell, I need to pay another $90, which means my effective cost is $210 for a $30 NFT. So it was really, really difficult to kind of break even um, off of the NFTs that I bought if I wanted to buy for an investment purpose. So another big reason why um, VV is great is that it's easy to get started. So there's no need for very technical uh, mumbo jumbo, like how do you, you know, store your seed phrase? How do you set up MetaMask? How do you deposit? cryptocurrencies into um, your MetaMask app? How do you, you know, select the right gas fee? Um, how do you bid for drops effectively? It's all very complicated. Whereas VV makes it really simple. There is a big timer over there with the buy now button. If you want to attend or bid for drops, just click on it, you buy it. Signing up is super easy. All you need is just an email and a password and you can get started. So that's one of the key reasons why I think it's very beginner friendly. And the last reason why I think it's great for beginners is that um, the characters or well, the artwork is beautiful. Beautiful in the sense that um, there is emotional relationship with the characters on the BB platform. For example, you know, most people would have some sort of um, emotional relationship with Wakanda forever after watching the movie. But if I were to share this Bored Apes image or for example, the CryptoPunks image to most people, you will not really understand or have any sort of emotional relationship with the characters. So by that logic, if you're buying your very first NFT, you want to buy something that you're actually willing to collect rather than just to speculate as an investment vehicle. So I hope I kind of gave you some insights on why I think it's a wonderful platform to get started. Now let's talk about how do you actually get started on this platform. So to get started is really simple. Um, you can visit their website. I'm going to leave the link in the description below um, or pop it up over here. What you need to do is to download the app. So it's available on iOS or Android. Um, so you can download from the app store. The next thing you need to do is to sign up for an account. So what you need is really just your email, which will be used as your 2FA. So at this moment, there is no KYC checks yet, but I heard that once they start to implement a method of cashing out, you will need to show, provide your identity in order to verify that you're a genuine person. So once you've downloaded the app, you can now buy your NFTs. And there are four key ways you can buy your NFTs. Um, so the first way is you can bid for the upcoming or latest drops. Um, the second way is to buy from the marketplace. Um, and the third way is to go through an auction in the marketplace. And the fourth method is to buy the NFT directly from another person. So among these four methods, my favorite are number one, bidding um, from the drops directly and number two, buying directly from another person. Why? Because I can get to buy these NFTs at a discount. So why I prefer these two methods is that most of the time I can actually buy the NFTs at a discount compared to market prices, but that's not always the case. So if you want to bid or you want to buy from the marketplace or you want to auction uh, for NFTs, you need this in-app currency called GEMS, which can be topped up um, through like a credit card or from a peer-to-peer -peer network. So by topping up using um, the card, it's way less riskier, but you are buying literally one gem for one US dollar. So my preferred method is to buy through the peer-to-peer -peer method, which is a much riskier method, but you can buy gems at a much cheaper cost. 
So how I went about doing it was that I went to local online marketplaces. Like in Singapore, it would be through Carousel. If you're in the US, you're looking at platforms such as eBay, or you can look out for Telegram and Facebook groups um, about locals in your area that's trying to sell gems. Of course, please be very careful about scammers. Um, so my personal recommendation is you can, if possible, you want to try to meet them face to face or use some sort of escrow to confirm um, that they actually have the gems and they can send it to you. So for my American friends, um, there is a demonstration made by this channel called Rob's Stuff um, on how you can buy gems on eBay. I'm going to leave the link over here. So do check it out. I think it's a wonderful video to show that um, you can actually buy them at a huge discount. So now that we've covered all the various ways to um, buy your NFTs as well as some of the best ways to top up your NFTs, let's talk about the step-by-step -step on how do you actually buy your nfts so personally i prefer to buy them through drops because that's when you can buy them at the cheapest possible price for really popular nfts but at the same time it's super super competitive i once read that there's about like two hundred thousand people on average trying to bid for every single popular drops so that's why you almost will never get a chance to bid for it because it's a first come first serve basis so you there's a lot of speed optimizing videos that are available on youtube i'm going to link one over here, unless you're willing to go through all this trouble, you would almost not be able to get any drops um, because it's a speed game. So to bid for the drops, all you have to do is at the home page, click on store, click on drops, click on latest drop and wait for the countdown timer to hit zero. So the one-on-one -on -one trick is really to align the button so that you can spam it very rapidly and that's how you can actually uh, have a chance. But that doesn't work if your internet is not fast enough, your phone is not fast enough. So there's a lot of factors and I highly encourage for those who are serious in trying to bid for drops, you know, check out the video on speed optimization videos. So the second way is to buy through auctions. And the most important thing to know when it comes to auction is that once you place a bid that you want to buy an auction, you must fulfill the purchase. So you make sure you have enough money, that's one. Um, if not, your account will be suspended and you'll be charged, I think, $10 um, because you bid it for it, but you didn't try to... Um, you didn't pay up basically. So you'll be given, I think, a day to pay up. So I think this is a good scenario when you are trying to speculate that the current NFTs are going to get less popular over the day. And that's when you try to bid on auctions and you can get buy them basically at a slight discount. But the risk, of course, is that if someone outbids you, then you may end up not getting NFTs at all. And if the prices shoot up and you try to, you know, actually buy from the marketplace the next day, it becomes really expensive to buy the NFT. So the third way to buy NFTs is through the peer-to-peer -peer method. And it is my favorite way because you can buy it, uh, in my opinion, the cheapest possible price. So again, I actually bought um, the Black Panther collection through Carousel. And the seller was actually a really young kid. I think he is in he's 70 in JC. So um, if I were to buy through the platform and I just bought the gems, you know, as from the secondhand market at like 60 cents off the dollar, I still would have had to pay about um, 2,500 Singapore dollars. But because I bought the entire collection through um, someone on the platform, he was able to give me a huge discount. I actually bought it for $2,100. Um, if I were to buy in US dollars, that would have been like three thousand plus dollars. So instead of buying for three k, I you know could have bought two point five. But since I bought it directly from the seller instead of buying gems and then buying through the platform, I actually bought it for two thousand one hundred dollars. So I actually saved a lot of money. But again, it's also very risky that this person can be trying to cheat you of your money. So with all of that said, NFTs are inherently very risky. So do not um invest what you cannot afford to lose. And I genuinely wish you the best of luck in um, speculating and collecting all these wonderful NFTs. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me below or check out what YouTube recommends you over here and here. And I will see you next time. Take care and stay safe, everyone.